You have a talk that focuses on visualization typography. Is that right? Yes. What's the overall state of typography and visualization? Is it in a good place? I think it's something that's often overlooked. Uh, a lot of people design visualizations, especially visualizations that are made to be generated programmatically with a best case scenario. And sometimes text comes in that's a little bit longer that you're, than you're expecting, or you have a few more categories than you're expecting, or it's being viewed on a mobile device where you don't have enough screen real estate. And uh, you kind of want to ignore those overlapping labels or the labels that don't quite fit. Um, so I think it's a challenging thing and something that we also need to work on. What's your process for incorporating typography into a visualization? Is it something you think through at the very beginning, or is it something you add on later? When should it be added? Well, especially if you're creating it programmatically and you don't have the luxury of handcrafting every visualization that you produce, it's something that you really do need to think through from the beginning. Um, and people have a tendency to think about typography in a best case scenario, but it's important to think through the different edge cases. Um, what happens if I'm not viewing this on a 15-inch desktop but a tiny mobile device? What happens if I'm viewing it in print and I don't have the ability to hover over this point and see more information? Uh, what happens if I have 150 bars and they're all really cramped? Um, thinking through all of the different edge cases is something that needs to happen from the very beginning. Does it make sense to start with the worst possible edge case and go backwards? I've found that if you forget about the worst possible edge case or you think that it won't happen, then someone else will find a way to make <laughs> it happen. <laughs> it's a Murphy's Law of visualization. Absolutely. Uh, what are the most important text elements in visualizations? There are a lot of them. There's the ch chart title, there's axis labels, there's the grid lines and grid numbers, category labels, data labels, citations and annotations. And I couldn't say that the one's more important than the other. It really depends on what story you're trying to tell. Um, sometimes the annotation is the most important one on the visualization. Are there particular ones that people always seem to forget? Um, uh, no, I think there, there's a lot that people tend to forget or it just oh. doesn't happen <laughs> to fit in their particular aesthetic and so sure. they get left out. So the design doesn't work with it. Yeah. The um, so years ago when I would talk to people about visualizations at Strata, it was always very top level, but here we are talking about specific improvements. Do you see that as a sign that this area is maturing? I don't know if the area is maturing specifically, but I'd say that there's a lot more interest in it in recent years, and a lot of people have taken it upon themselves to go out and learn about it in their free time, um, because we are becoming more of a data-driven society. We've seen strata grow phenomenally over the past few years, and um, it's becoming more important for businesses to use data in their day-to-day -day lives. But most of the people that I know who work with data visualization in a professional capacity did not learn about it in university. There were no courses in data visualization years ago. It's something that people are learning because they're interested in it, because they have access to more data, because they're picking up data sets from OpenGov websites, or they're grabbing it from their Fitbits or their personal devices, and they're just becoming more interested in it. So I'd say that there's a larger number of people who have um, a larger body of knowledge in terms of how to create effective visualizations, and they're ready for that next level to really deep dive into the specifics of making good visualizations. You have an ebook out that's titled, is it Data Plus Design or Data and Design? I don't, I can't data, data Design. Data Design, okay. How did that project come together? So about a year ago, I was hosting a Kickstarter for my uh, tech startup, InfoActive. We're a web app that makes interactive infographics and data visualizations. And we were receiving messages from people all over the world. And one of the messages that I received was from a a statistical programmer in Chicago named Diana, and she said, hey Trina, Stats Dork here from Chicago. I'm wondering, are you planning to provide any sort of tutorials or resources for people who may not be quite as experienced in the data collection or analysis process? And I said, Diana, that's a fantastic idea. We're about two people right now. What do you think we can feasibly <laughs> do? And so we started talking, and we realized that there was a need for a data resource that spanned beyond the scope of our startup, um, something that could be platform agnostic, something that people could contribute to and uh, work on together. And so we put a call out for contributors and we had more than 100 applications from all over the world. And so over the past eight months, we wrote a 300 page open source, completely free ebook called Data Design. 
um, with the goal of explaining the important data concepts in really simple, friendly language, something that's approachable for someone who may be, say, a graphic designer, and they don't have a lot of training in math or statistics, and they might even be a little bit nervous about digging into a statistics textbook that was never edited for someone like them. Um, so we've been working on this for the past eight months um, and we released the first version at the end of August and now it's being translated into multiple languages and it's continuing to expand. So it's been a really great project to work on. It's on GitHub too? It's on right. GitHub, yep. It's open source. Excellent. Uh, last question for you and this is a little bit adjacent to what we've been discussing but I'm interested in your take on this idea that everyone should learn to code. What do you, what's your take on that? Yeah, it's an interesting question, and I'll say that learning to code definitely changed my life for the better. There was a point where I felt like I was being very held back in terms of where I wanted to go personally and professionally by my inability to code in the way that I wanted to. So I actually took some time off. I stopped everything in life for four months, and I took four months to join an apprenticeship program in software craftsmanship, and I went in and I asked questions every day for 40 hours a week for four months um, and learned Ruby on Rails. And that was incredibly helpful for me. And these days, I don't spend a lot of time writing code, um, but it's incredibly helpful for me to be able to communicate with our engineers and communicate with other people in the industry who are working on interesting projects and not being shy to jump into code myself when I know that something can be done in another way and I want to experiment, that's been really helpful. That said, it's a tremendous amount of work to become good at programming. Um, I think anyone can learn a couple of things in a day or two, but uh, to become proficient at it, it takes a tremendous amount of time and I don't know that it's the best use of everyone's skills. Um, that said, there was this idea a few years ago, this, this idea of code or be coded, where we're living in a world that's so full of code that you really need to know how to code in order to succeed in life. I feel like we're entering the stage where that is true of data, where we're entering this stage of use data or be dated. If you're not learning about data and you don't have the ability to understand data, you're going to be left behind in the same way that people were talking about being left behind if you don't know how to code. Interesting. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it.